Hello, are you ready to listen to the Word of God? Which I will talk to you frankly. I'll talk the Word of God to you as it is. You may not have heard it, maybe your priest never said these words before, your pastor, your rabbi, whoever teaches you. But we are reading together and we have to say the word as it is. And if we do, it will give us the freedom to know where we are going and what we are doing. Today we are talking Exodus chapter 20 verse 17 which says, You shall not covet. You can also find this in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 21. So you can check as well. Uh, it's a similar law. As I said, in law number 4, I counted the words, and the words were 98. It was the longest, I said last time around. This one has got 34 words. It's also long. Why do you think God takes such a long time, or rather uses so many words to explain something? I think it's important. It doesn't mean the other laws are not important. They are. But in this case, God wants us to be He's very specific so that we are also specific. So, law number 10. Of course, if you count the words in your own Bible, it might differ slightly, but the words definitely are plus minus 34 in this law number 10. Um, let me read it. Uh, that's Exodus 20 verse 17. It says, You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Specific. It says what you should not covet. But what is to covet? To covet is to yearn to possess something which does not belong to you. It belongs to another person. Similar words could be desire or crave or consumed with desire. Or you can say burn for or longing for something or wishing for something. That's to covet. In other words, something doesn't belong to you, but you want it. You, 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 you just want to have a part of it. And because of that, that's not a good heart, because that, that thing belongs to that person, and let it belong to them. Just it. If we, the person has got a good worker, let them be work for them. Why do you want something which belongs to somebody else? And because of that, God put a law. Because if you want something which belongs to somebody else, in the end you might want to steal it. If you fail to steal it, you might want to use force, you know, maybe to kill the person, to get something which doesn't belong to you. So that's why you mustn't have that heart to want something which belongs to somebody. That heart yearning means you're really burning, you want that thing. And that's wrong. That's why God is saying, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. Your neighbor's wife, you yearning for her. She doesn't belong to you. She belongs to the husband. So why should you? Okay? So, in this case, God, he took such a long time, like 34 words. He wants us to be very sure what we should not covet. Your neighbor's house. He's got a bigger house than yours. Be happy for him. He's got a beautiful wife. Yeah, belongs to him. He got a nice handsome husband. Yeah, belongs to her. So let it be. You got a nice female servant. They work very hard, cheerful people. Yeah, be happy for them. Maybe his ox are fat and they pull the plow properly. Maybe the donkey is such a hard-working donkey. Yeah, leave it. Belong to them. 
or anything of your neighbor. So go to time to specifically say these are the things you must not covet. Why can't you take time to read as well? Because if God took time to explain to you what you should not, then you also have to take time to learn what God is saying. Because what God says definitely it's important. Right, in this case, uh, if I look at, you know, like God has been very specific. He also said in law number four, he said, remember the Sabbath day. Very specific. He said things. Go back to the videos. You're going to say what God said. So we have to be very careful in that we have to learn what he said so that we can get in our ears, in our mind, exactly what God wants us to do. Then we'll be in sync with him, you know. We will be in the same mind as him and we will definitely, you know, be like God. Mark 7 verse 21, I'll read this to you. It says, Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, a foolishness, all these things are from within, from within the heart. And that's the thing which defiles a person. So, why is God saying that? He's saying that because all evil starts in the heart. And we must be careful to think right, so that we don't have to go and covet what belongs to somebody else. In other words, we must be happy with what we have. If we are happy with what we have, then definitely we will not start to go and look for what belongs to somebody else. Because not being happy, of course, then, you know, why not? If you want something, go work for yourself and get something for yourself. But don't long for something which belongs to somebody else. Because in the end, you end up troubled in your heart and you end up wanting to steal the thing from the person and you end up, if you go to steal the thing and they find you there maybe at night and you might want to struggle with the owner and you may end up killing the person or the person end up killing you. So there's no need for that. So the law, you shall not covet your neighbor's house a neighbor's wife, male servant, female servant, ox, donkey, or anything that's your neighbor's. Let's get it right. Matthew 5 verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God.